Hello there. With 4.0 being like two days away from ending, I thought to myself, why not talk a bit about the exploration experience brought by it? I did do an initial video based purely on the main story and its more limited exploration, but I did want to do a more in-depth one after exploring most of what we have from Fontaine. I did plan to make this video like a week after the initial one, but I just put it off more and more and and to be fair, I feel like it was a better idea as that allowed me to experience a lot more of what the region had to offer. Before I begin, I do want to let you all know that this will have spoilers for what you can find throughout the new area and also about a lot of the story aspects added with 4.0. So if you don't want to get spoiled, well, don't watch the video. <laughs> but if you do continue to watch it and you do enjoy the content, do please leave a like, comment or subscribe. Okay, let's get started with exploration. First things first is the underwater exploration that is just pure fun. Initially, after spending a long time underwater for the different puzzles and chests and quests, whenever I was on land, I felt like a fish out of water. I guess that's how Kokomi mains felt until now. Jokes aside, it is amazingly fluid for an underwater mechanic. History has shown that underwater levels are mm, how to put it, not really liked by the community, but I do feel that Hoivers hit the nail when it comes to it. Easy to move around, especially up and down, as they allowed us to use the mouse for that. My only complaint is that the combat is very simple, but I do understand why. Giving most characters new underwater attacks animation would have been a lot of work to do, so why not go for some generic animations instead? To be fair, I don't think the underwater mechanics will stick around after Fontaine, other than maybe some small puzzle areas, so that, that might have been a factor there too. One thing I think they could have done, though, is to not require the player to find specific mobs within the water to use the new attacks, and instead allow the player to just swap between them at will. The burst button is empty when underwater after all. With the limiting combat out of the way, I have to say that this is my favorite new exploration mechanic they have introduced. It is also the most expansive, as everything else before felt more like an evolution of an already existing mechanic, kind of like the four-leaf sigils from Sumeru being a better version of the ones in Inazuma. Something interesting the Toyverse did is also how they introduced verticality in the new region. Like, yeah, you still have the tall mountains and some caves around, but the fact that most of the verticality is found within the deep waters surrounding Fontaine is amazing. Yeah, they still have caves around, but the underwater fauna and flora that exist within them make the new caves and canyons feel much more alive than before. There's also the uh, returning mechanic, again from Inazuma, weirdly enough, with the teleportation circles. They are highly similar, if not the same as the teleportation gates, but you can't really turn them around. The new aqua bus and hot air balloons are also interesting, though only one is really used for exploration. The aqua bus will take you from major location to major location, and it is really nice how it is introduced right at the start of the story. A bit limiting, as you have to go through preset routes, but when you have 5 minutes where you can do nothing, or if you got to be AFK, why not just take one of these and get to your destination in the meantime? On the other hand, the hot air balloons are unfortunately only really used for puzzles from what I've seen. Maybe they will get expanded on later as the region grows bigger. What about comparing Fontaine with the older regions? Well, I do believe that each region did something different from the others to the point where each one of them have their own merits. Mondstadt, for example, does feel like a generic starting area in an RPG or of something you would see in a fantasy isekai. But that is the beauty of it. The simplicity allows players to slowly get into Genshin without worrying about world-ending threats or in, in weird organizations. Well, until the end of it, either way. Liyue does introduce a lot more verticality with its valleys and mountains, but still kept more open parts like the Dihua Marsh. Inazuma, being an island nation, already made it a lot more different, as water travel with boats was almost required to get to islands for the first time. Also, its beauty was just something else. Then, there was Meru, which came to us with a lot of cave exploration, most of which was behind the Aranyaka questline though, so yeah. The rainforest was a nice addition by providing even more verticality in its design while also adding new mechanics that aided the player in traversing it. 
After that came the desert, which is how to put it. Well, it's plain and it's simple. You cannot deny that, but I do have to say that the first time you explore through it, I feel like it might be the best area in the game. The world quests tied to the exploration and unlocking of the slate permissions were some of the best alongside the lore that was brought from them. Yes, if you do go after you have explored everything, it does feel very boring because it is a desert after all, so I feel like even in, in that side it also does a pretty good job. So now that, we that I talked about the exploration in Fontaine and also compared it to the previous nations, what else do I have to talk about? Well, since I went over the Archon quest in the previous video, it is now time to cover the two big world quests that appear in this version. These being Ancient Colors and Anne of the Nar Narza Nar Narzi. You know what, I'll just say Nars because I'm not sure how to say that word. One thing I did love about these is the fact that the two world quests end up being tied together because of the main characters in these having deeper connections from the past. I'll start with Anne of the Nars, as in my opinion, it was slightly less impressive compared to the others, but it was not bad, like not at all. But after going through the rest of the story in the update, it did feel a bit more basic, even though it gave a decent amount of lore. Its main area was also the one from the trailer, where the giant watery ocean it was, but in the end it was only really an illusion of sorts. The reveal that it was all actually a story was well, obvious from the very uh, early stages of the quest, as a lot of the things the character said and did seemed like they were from a play or from a children's book. I do believe that they had a bit too many characters added to the adventure group from from them to just disappear partly through the uh, through the adventure. Felt a bit off in my opinion. With that said, the ending was really interesting, with Marianne and the reveal of Anne being a manifestation of the story, and of Marianne from the looks of it. Honestly, I still don't understand how that whole thing really fits together, but what can I say, it's magic, it's Genshin, oceanid magic, however you want to call it. The second quest also starts innocently enough, but by the end we'll literally get to a point where Fontaine would, was like seconds away from disaster, more than it already is. You meet Mimir at the start who wants to paint in peace, but does get harassed by a bunch of Eremites. You save her and she wants to paint your portrait to show her gratitude. Shenanigans with paint ensue and you do end up facing the employer of the Eremites who is also an Abyss Herald and also connected to those other characters that I talked about a bit earlier. Who wants to currently resurrect a giant beast called Elinus? Or at least wants its blood for something. But plot twist, Elinus is actually a good guy who might or might not have come from the Abyss. Talking about cosmic power and coming from beneath the earth does give me abyssal origin vibes. Alongside that, it acted very similar to Durin, an abyssal influenced character that did evil without realizing it. Oh, and the pole quest does take place inside its petrified carcass. Yes, I know, quite metal, not gonna lie. But, other than that, the whole quest is really wholesome, and the mirror scenes themselves are very lovely. I really enjoyed this world quest for both its random NPC interactions and also for the added lore. Now, where do the two world quests intersect? Well, it's with a character I haven't really talked about from the second world quest. Seymour. Seymour is a highly advanced mecha dog that was being cared for by Mimir but its real purpose was to protect none other than Mary Ann. Yes, the one who created Anne from the other world quest is also the owner of Seymour. In the end, once you finish both world quests, Seymour and Anne do end up in, a, in the same area, wanting to know more about the past and what happened to Mary Ann. An area which seemingly was of high importance to the group that Mary Ann was part of. Most likely we will get more about this, just like how we got more quests that had the jet as the focus during Sumeru, that expand, also expanded on its lore. <sighs> what would I even give as a conclusion? I, I love the area and all its types of exploration, be it underwater or the airships. Actually, I know what I need to talk about. The commissions. 
Boy, oh boy, the commissions. There are some really cool ones, like, you know, the easy just go to a spot and defeat enemies. Not not too long. Doesn't doesn't take too long. <sighs> but some of the ones that you have to interact with NPCs are once again amazingly long for no real reason. I really don't understand why you would want to put 50, no, not 50, I'm exaggerating, 20 to 30 lines of dialogue, like straight up lines. Not just like clicking through them, but like 10 clicks, each having like two to three lines. Like, why would you want to do that? I don't really care about the painter dude and his paintings, right? Or the diver commission, if I'm being totally honest here. The one with the kids, I do like a lot more because it just started really nicely and innocently and it gave some characterization to its, um, to its NPCs throughout the whole story that it's trying to tell and I actually really like it. The one with coffee making, I feel like it's a very like missed opportunity of using the, the bartending minigame from like a year and a half ago, I think. Man, I so wish some of those things would get brought back. But yeah, I kind of don't like the fact that the commissions, at least the ones that are supposedly having stories to them, are just, like, so unnecessary. I also remembered another one. The one where, where there's a woman that loses, like, an item or whatever. You have to go talk to her. She says, like, ten things. You go to a Mercene, Mer Mer who's a police... Uh, person then uh, then that that one also talks like five or six lines then you have to do uh you have to go to a specific spot but you have to wait for the police police person to come there first you can't just go ahead find the item and that's it no you have to wait for the mirror scene and i'm like why and unfortunately Instead of these quests, these commissions starting a bit more basic, as in let's intru let's let's have the first commission introduce the characters and their like bigger needs and what might happen throughout the, the throughout the commission chain, it just puts you straight into the like lots of dialogue commission for you to do nothing other than take a photo or find an item. That's why I think I like the one with, uh, with the children and the hide-and-seek a lot more. But it's mostly a nitpick as you can just spam click through them. Another thing I didn't really like was the climb you had to do for some of the Hydroculi, but that's like more on my part. Score-wise, I think it's still the same. Actually, I'll put it at an 8.5 out of 10 as the experience of the underwater mechanics maybe appreciate the whole update a lot more, but I don't really want to put it a lot, like, I don't really want to take away from the score because of the commissions. I don't feel like those really should take away from a region because you can just not do them and just do still do the Sumeru ones or whichever ones you're doing. Okay, so I think this should be it for 4.0, but I will do more of these videos when 4.1 does come out. I do want to do these at least for the first few major updates, which do come within stories and areas. Either way, this is it. I hope you have enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.